Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? I hope everything is good. I hope everything is great. Everything here is wonderful. And today, as promised, I'm going to talk to you about Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Defense Against the Dark Arts two-player card game. Picked this up at Origins this past weekend. I was really excited to pick this one up because both my girlfriend and I love um, Harry Potter. And uh, this has been billed as Harry Potter Star Realms, uh, two-player head-to-head card battling deck builder. And we both love Star Realms. So I was really um, looking forward to this. So first, let's see, you know, kind of how the game works and what's in the box. Obviously, there is a rulebook. And in addition to a rulebook, there is this little uh, dueling board. This is, uh, I guess, supposed to represent one of the tables in the hall. I think that's where the duels take place. Uh, two players up on a table battling it out. You both start in the center squares, and if you can ever get your opponent to the end, to the stun, uh, you win that battle. In addition to that, we have these uh, house cards. Each player gets to choose their their house. Um, you don't have to put on the sorting hat. Both players can choose the same house. These are double-sided and so that it's always available to you to take the other house. There are benefits to having um, certain houses versus certain other houses when cards come up. I'll show you that in a little bit. Another thing in the box is a lot of superfluous tokens. In fact, the rulebook tells you that these tokens are superfluous, and these are attack and health tokens. So as you play cards throughout the game, you'll be generating these. These are used to either move your opponent backwards on the track or to move yourself forwards on the track. You'll get some prestige tokens. These look like coins, but they are not coins. They are prestige, and these are how you will pay for cards. And you get probably the coolest component in this box is these awesome little skull tokens. These are actual metal, and these are used to mark when a person gets knocked out. So, like every standard card battling game, um, you start with a deck of 10 cards. Your deck is going to basically be comprised of some money generating cards or some prestige generating cards in this instance. Uh, so you will have seven copies of Aloha Mora, which generate one prestige each. You will have a cauldron, which generates either a prestige or a health, and you will have a wand, which generates one attack. The one unique thing about the setup in this game is you get to choose your familiar. You get to choose from the cat, uh, the toad, or the owl. These offer you a unique decision at the beginning of the game that gives you a little special ability. You can read that on the card. For instance, if you have the owl, once per turn you can save a prestige, and then on a future turn you can remove all the prestige and spend it. So that's a handy little tool to have. You're also going to have books. Books are available until they run out. There are eight of them included, so that you have something to spend your prestige on if you have a bad draw. And the one innovation in this game that is unique to this game is hexes. There is a whole pile of these hexes, and they do all sorts of nasty things, such as you cannot play allies this turn. Um, you cannot draw extra cards this turn. Put two hexes in your discard pile and banish this card. And there are lots of card effects where you will be putting these into your opponent's uh, discard pile or even into their hand, uh, which will really mess with them on their turn. So this is the unique addition to this game versus other card battling games. Um, also, huge deck of cards, lots and lots and lots of different cards in here. Um, there are three card types that you can find in the deck. You have items. Items are yellow. You start with two in your deck. You have a cauldron and a wand, um, but you can gain items throughout the game that do special things. These don't like stay and play or anything. There's just cards that reference items versus cards that reference spells. So there might be a card that says you can put items that you collect this turn directly into your hand or on top of your deck or something like that. Um, spells are played one time and they go away just like items, but there are cards that target spells and say if you played X number of spells this turn or whatever. Some of the cards have a special house symbol on them and this is where the choosing your house at the beginning of the game matters because if you are from that house or you have an ally with that house, so this house is Slytherin, if I either chose Slytherin or if I had a Slytherin ally in play, such as uh, Crab here, 
then I could use the special ability at the bottom of the card. If I don't have that, I can still use the card, but I only get what is in this yellowish area. Uh, for instance, with this card, Imperio, I can gain one attack for each ally my opponent has in play. Uh, but if I have a Slytherin character, I can also put a, uh, make my opponent discard a non-hex card. Uh, and those are the main components. Essentially what you're going to do is take turns battling back and forth trying to move your opponent to the stun space while trying to keep yourself out of the stun space. As soon as somebody gets stunned, you're going to take one of the metal skull tokens and put it on your house card. Once a person has been stunned three times, they lose. Your house card has the turn order on it. The basic flow of the game is at the start of your turn, you're going to resolve any hexes that you have in your hand. You must resolve them, and they go into like a separate pile. Every card you play goes into a separate pile. It does not go into your discard pile until the end of the turn. Uh, the second thing you're going to do is play cards and use in-play cards like your allies to generate effects. Um, gain and use your attack, your defense, or your health, and your prestige to buy new things and then it'll get moved to your discard pile at the end of your turn. So at the end of your turn, you're gonna place all cards you played in your discard pile. You're gonna discard all your unused tokens and draw five new cards. Like I said before, play back and forth until one person's been stunned. Uh, once a person gets stunned, you're gonna reset. Resetting is nothing more than taking all of your cards that are in play and in your discard pile, shuffling up, moving your, start, moving your characters back to the start space and starting over. Uh, it doesn't do anything extra beyond that. So that's the basics on how to play. All right, so we've played the game now uh, completely through twice, um, which I feel like, I, yeah. here's the thing. It's not very good. Um, it's okay. It's, it's a playable game. It works. If you love Harry Potter, you'll probably enjoy yourself, but honestly, I'm gonna say you probably won't enjoy yourself. Um, the only innovation that this brings to a modern deck building game is these hexes, and this is by far one of the worst play experiences I've ever had in gaming. Um, these things are really easy to add to your opponent's deck. You get cards that just like add a, put a hex in their deck, put a hex in their deck. And if you get one of these early, if you get a card that does that early, which is pretty much guaranteed, um, then it's, you're going to draw it every other turn, basically. You know, you're, you're going through your deck really quickly in the beginning of the game. So every third turn-ish, you're going to be putting a hex in their deck. And that's assuming you only have one of these cards. If you have two of these cards, you're just wrecking them. Because hexes don't go away. There are some that will banish themselves once they resolve, but for the most part, they don't. So you're drawing dead cards that you can't play that have a negative play effect, and then they just go right back into your deck, and they just get shuffled back in. That being said, like, usually taking the cards that give hexes slows you down also. Like, they don't do much else. You just give your opponent a hex, which means that it didn't do anything for you on your turn. But at the same time, you're drawing a card that doesn't do anything but give them a hex. When they draw the hex, it takes up a card slot in their hand and also really impacts them. It really forces their turn, and it feels really... It doesn't feel good. It feels bad. Um, on top of that... The battling, the, 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 the little tug-of-war mechanic, uh, it, it works, but I feel like with the cards that I've seen, it's much easier to heal than it is to damage. So you basically have to do the full 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage. That's not true. I'm going to say you're going to have to deal at least 4 damage on your turn to be able to actually knock somebody out because you're always just healing. You just heal. No big deal. And so the game goes on, and then you're just getting more hexed and then you're just having less productive turns and less productive turns because hexes just keep compounding. It, it just doesn't feel good. It, it feels, it just feels dirty. And then on top of all of that, say I knock you out. I've filled your deck with hexes and I knock you out. What happens? Nothing. We just shuffle our decks and start over. So you still have a deck full of hexes and uh, we just repeat. And that feels wrong, too. I feel like at the end of the game, or at the end of the, each round, you probably should have to remove these from your deck, or something. Something should happen that kind of resets. Nothing resets the game. Uh, I don't really feel like there's anything dramatic that could be in play that could really swing the game just by shuffling it back into the deck and starting over. Yeah, I could have a bunch of allies out, but allies are kind of weak. They don't do a whole lot. They might let you draw an extra card. Uh, they might let you heal, which, again, that does keep you in the game longer. But they come out when you 
when you place them, they stay out. They don't go away unless your opponent has something to make them go away or you draw a hex, which makes them go away. So they're not taking up space in your deck. I don't know. I'm not going to say I don't enjoy it. I, but it, it, I would rather just play like DC Deck Builder or Star Realms. Like they're much more thought out games than this. This feels, I guess it feels like Harry Potter. I mean, you're, you're, you're playing cards that have names like Aloha Mora or Flipendo. And so you, you, you recognize characters, you recognize spells, but you're not like, just like any other deck builder, you're just trying to maximize your income so that you could buy better cards and use better cards to defeat your opponent. It really has nothing to do with Harry Potter. And getting this, like, why do why does this ally just suddenly show up in the middle of a duel and he's standing on my side of the table and that benefits me somehow? I don't really know. Um, there is a bit of a disconnect theme-wise, but really, just overall, the hexes are the thing that really breaks this game for me. It, a, a negative play experience is... Um, it's 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 a drag. It's a drag for both players. Like I felt bad giving more hexes. Like oh yeah, sucks to be you. You know, I don't want to tell you. It just feels like uh, it feels wrong. I feel like these probably should banish themselves more. There are some that do. There are some that'll be like uh, put two hexes in your discard pile, then banish this one. So sure, this one banished itself, but now you have one more hex in your deck. Um, there are some that say, uh, very few of these. Banish the top card of your deck and then banish this card. This is actually a pretty good card. Like, I wouldn't mind getting this in my deck. Like any deck builder, I want to get cards out of my deck. So, this one actually isn't that bad, but unfortunately there's very few of them in here. Um, you cannot gain attack or health this turn, then banish this hex. So there's a couple, but as you can see, I've had to dig through most of this deck to find hexes that banish themselves. So this negative play experience stays for the entirety of the game, and because of the tug-of-war scenario not really being interesting, because I just heal most of my damage every turn, um, it feels really wrong that when we, quote, reset, I'm still stuck with all this garbage, and I just lose. Like, I, I don't know. We're going to keep playing it. I'm not going to say I'm not going to keep playing it. It is Harry Potter. It is a new game to us, so I'll keep going. And if if my opinion changes, I'll update you. But truthfully, I feel like I would rather play a different deck builder that doesn't have this hex mechanic because it's completely unfun on a whole new level. Um, if the decks were bigger, if we had like 30 card starting decks, then this really wouldn't have that much of an impact. But because it's a standard 10 card deck, it's just so easy to pump hexes into your opponent's deck and they just get run away. They'll have turns where you, they draw five hexes and what are you going to do? You just lose. That's what you do. Feels weird. That's my take. Yeah. I hope this uh, was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to do more. So if you did like it, please uh, let me know in the comments. If you didn't like it, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, and subscribe and tell me what other games that you want me to review because I will gladly do more of this in the future That's all I have for you today. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking commenting subscribing be amazing friends and wonderful people I appreciate you and I'll see you tomorrow Hey Doc, wait, I want to ask you something Taser and fact comes from Wikipedia. How many countries does the Nile River flow through? The Nile is an international river, as its water resources are shared by 11 countries, namely Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, Kinshasa, Kinshasa, <laughs> Kenya, Ethiopia, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan, and Egypt.